Hey everyone, welcome to this new tutorial. And today we are going to talk about types in Solidity. Yeah. So uh, before we talk about that, I just want to mention that Solidity is statically typed. That means every variable, you have to specify that type of the value that that variable will hold. Okay. So let's imagine you want to say a variable called name will hold a value called Merkim Dev, okay, and by the way, that's the name of my channel. So uh, you have to specify that that variable should be of type string, okay. So you say a variable name of type string will hold a string, okay. Does that make sense? Let's jump into the video and see all the solidity types and give some brief explanation about that. So right here, I have created a solidity. I mean, a smart contract and. I'm going to explain everything as I'm typing it so that you understand and you see how we declare all, I mean, how we declare all those variables with their types, okay? So to kick off with this, I will start with the integers, okay? And in Solidity, we have two types of integers. We have signed integers and unsigned integers, right? So a signed integer is an integer that can take a minus, okay? But an unsigned integer is an integer that cannot take a minus sign. That means an unsigned integer will always be positive and the signed integer can either be positive or negative. Okay. And let's declare an assigned integer and an unsigned integer. Okay. So you said you int. Okay. And with integer, they vary from 8, eight bytes to 250 bytes. Okay. So we'll have here, we can have u int 8, but by default, an integer and an unsigned integer will have, will be 256. That means u int and u int 256 are the same and int and int 256 are the same. Okay. So here we'll say u int number, this will, will initialize that to be equal to 4. Okay. And you have to put a comma. And we're going to declare an integer, okay? And this is going to also be int 256, number 2, okay? Or I'll say second number, second number, just like this. And this will be equal to 10, okay? And you always have to put a comma at the end. So those are basically two integers. We have a signed integer and an unsigned, unsigned integer. But now let's try to prove that you cannot assign a minus to a u int. So here, if I say u int equals minus four, you already get an error. Okay. And the error says type int minus four is not implicitly convertible to expect type. Oops, the error is not showing, but it's going to say to accept type int. Okay. But here for the, uh, for the signed integer, you can easily put minus 10 and you're not seeing any error. Okay. And basically that's how you differentiate between a signed integer and an unsigned integer. So next step, after talking about integers, we are going to talk about strings. Okay. And a string is basically, you just say string. Okay. That will be the type of the string. And this string will be called name. Okay. And as I said before, you can say, Marky dev just like this this is an i mean this is a string and you can either put single quotation marks or double quotation marks it all depends on you but you better work with double quotation marks okay and that is how we declare a string and basically a string is just the same in all programming languages i think so we won't talk more about strings and we'll quickly jump into the next step and we we are going to talk about after talking about strings we are going to talk about booleans okay and basically a boolean is just a true or false okay so here you can say bool this is how you do, i mean this is the type of a boolean it's bool so we're going to have bool um veracity it's just okay bool veracity so it's either true okay or false and you don't have to put quotation marks around because booleans are 
booleans are built in okay so you have true or false that is it for a boolean so after talking about boolean we are now going to talk about addresses okay and i know you've probably heard about address because if someone says like i want to sell you some cryptocurrency just drop me your address okay and an address an address is a 20 byte i mean it's a 20 byte length value that and that is the length of the ethereum ethereum address and basically an address is just okay let's consider let's consider our blockchain as the world okay and each house has an address right and that is basically the the same address as on the ethereum blockchain or the address in web3 okay so on the blockchain each i mean each contra uh, a contract or an account has an address okay that means it's a it's a location if i can call it like that so in addresses we have a simple address and we also have a payable address and basically an address and a payable address are the same but the only difference is that a payable address you can send ether or you can send crypto to that payable address so here we can have address uh address my address just and this my address will be for now is going to be equal to zero x okay and that's my address i just say zero x Uh, so we're going to initialize that just a minute we're going to initialize this to zero okay you can either type zero x but i mean the right way to initialize is to say address zero and that will initialize an empty address okay and these addresses they come from metamask or whatever wallet you're using uh so this is a simple address remember i said you have an address and a payable address so for the payable address uh this is the address where you can send cryptocurrency and if you are on the ethereum blockchain this is where you can send ether and so i can convert this address to a payable address okay because they are the same right so i can say address uh here i'm going to just say address my payable address okay and this is going to be equal to payable you have to specify that is no 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 not right here not right here it's right here you say address payable okay to specify that it's a payable address and you'll say this is going to be equal to a certain address all right it's either zero zero x seven something okay you just initialize an address so this address will be payable okay that means you can send cryptocurrency to that address all right uh so the next step we are going to talk about enums okay and basically uh enums create uh let me just let me just create an enum here and this is going to be equal to let's say go left i mean uh go left or go right so uh instead of typing this i think i'm going to show you i'm going to show you how an enum look like so we go to solidity solidity language and right here um we just look for the enum and we see how it look like okay uh, let's quickly go there instead of me retyping the same thing i think it's easy if you see it from if you see it from the dogs right so we are having enum types and they say uh an enum is right just i'm not yeah it's right here enum state and it, you see created locked and inactive so they say enums can be used to create custom types with a finite set of constant values okay that is the definition of an enum and i won't go very deep into that so i'll just jump into the next step and the next step after talking about enums we're going to talk about arrays so arrays 
also have two types of arrays we have just give me a second oh okay we have uh fixed size arrays and we also have non-fixed size arrays okay so they are dynamics dynamic size arrays so for a fixed size array you already know the size of the array before you initialize the array right so uh let's before we talk about those let's just see how you can uh you can define an array so you're going to define an array of integers okay so i'm going to say uint u int to 56 array and we can make it either public or private so in this case i'm going to make it public and i'll say my array okay so there i've declared a new array and that array will contain u int i mean you contain unsigned integers and remember as i said everything is that is statically typed so you have to specify what variables are going to be stored in that array and it seems that we have an error here so let's just look at the error okay it says this is an error and right this is not an address okay i was just trying i was trying to create a certain address but the, this is not an address so just initialize this to an empty address as we did it up there initialize that to an empty address and i i think the error will still be there okay because it says um type address is not ex uh, is not ex implicitly convertible to accept to expect type address uh, and i think this is because a payable address cannot be an empty address okay so i'll just initialize this without any i mean it i will initialize it without any address because uh, you can't send ether to an empty address okay and there the error has disappeared so let's go back to arrays as i was saying uh, everything has to be um statically typed so this array will only accept u int so you can't put an integer in this in this array so this is um this is a dynamic size array and we also have fixed size arrays that means you already know the size of the array and you can't add any other value to that array uh so next step after talking about arrays we are going to talk about struct and basically a struct is a i can say a struct is a structure that helps you define a, a new type in solidity so let's say you want to you want to create a human okay you want to create a human or you want to create the values of a human you may say you have uh u int u int age equal 25 uh u int what else height okay equals to, to one like one meter height string name string name equals uh so say alicia it's just an example let me just put double quotes this will be the name of the person okay so um as you can see let me just see this error i don't know oh okay we have another string name here so i'll say string my name okay to avoid to avoid the error right so i'll say string my name so this is the person and those are the variables that store everything related to that person but uh doing things this way is not really i mean it doesn't look nice that's why you can group all these you can group all these variables in one i mean in one block okay and you can say struct struct human okay and this struct will hold just give me a second this struct will hold all these values i mean all these variables but without values okay because it's a struct so you can create so many human I mean you can create so many humans from this one struct okay or from this one structure just like this you have created a struct so if i want to if i want to create now alicia i'll say um i'm just going to say struct okay this is going to be struct because that's the type okay uh struct alicia is going to be equal 
to human okay to human then i'm going to pass the values i'll say age 16 next i'll say height one and i'll say name this is going to be the name is going to be alicia and i can create another struct from this i mean from this single struct i can create as many struct as i want so we'll remove that we'll remove that from there and see what's the error here and here it says expected uh that but go to equal okay um so here i'm just going to i'm just going to double check what i did as a mistake right there right so uh the mistake i did right here is to say struct again and this is <laughs> this has to be human right because that's now the type okay that's now the type of alicia and well, you see the error has disappeared so we create a human called alicia from this struct of a human okay and these structs can really be helpful when you're trying to create like objects in javascript yeah when you're trying to create sort of objects so let's say you want to create a struct of a car and you have to specify the color the the, the um, i don't know the color the number of wheels and all those stuff so you have to put them in a struct so that you can easily i mean you can easily re refer to that struct and get everything up and running so next step we are going to talk about mapping okay uh now imagine let's just go back here to the array okay so we have to we, the way you can see this array it's just it containing integers right but now imagine if you want to create a key pair value okay where let's say you have to know this address has i mean this address has this amount of ether and this other address has this amount of ether in a in this contract okay so let's say you're creating an application and whenever someone deposits some money in your application you want to record that and to easily retrieve that okay so they deposit the money using their address and you want to know this address has deposited this amount of money that way uh, the key pair of the mapping comes in place so how do you declare a mapping right here we're having a mapping you just say mapping just like this bracket and now you have to put the key okay and the key in this case will be the address and this address will be pointing to the uint that will be yeah and this address will be will be pointing to a uint and you say you might say this is private okay because you don't want to to put it public and this is going to be maybe holders okay i'm just giving uh, a certain a certain name so in the holders you have to know which address has which amount of money so here to access a certain address let's say this this address right here okay this address right here has deposit 20 ether okay so in these holders if you want to address the balance i mean you want to access the balance of this address we are just going to say holders holders at this key okay and the key is going to be the address okay so when you say holders at this address you get the balance okay or you get the amount which is the u int and that's how basically you use the mapping for so uh let's wrap up with this uh, and i think we have talked about uh, all the most important data types so we have the integers we have u int and int we have the string a boolean address where you have a normal address and a payable address we have talked about arrays we have talked about mapping we have talked about enums we have also talked about struct yeah and that's that's basically it and those are the those are the commonly used data types in solidity so right that's all i had for this video hope you got all the data types in solidity and you can now use them to create your own smart contract so guys thanks for watching uh if there is anything you want to talk about you can reach out to me on twitter and put that in the comment below so again 
thank you all and i'll catch up with you in the next one